Welcome back, I'm Sammy K. Powers, and in this video we're going to be running the PHP test suite using runtest.php. Now in the previous video we compiled PHP from source, and we have a compiled PHP binary sitting at sapi, sapi, slash cli, slash php, if we do dash dash version, we can see we have the latest and greatest version of PHP. You're just probably going to say 7.3 or 8 or whatever. So let's take a look at where these test files live. All right, so here we have the PHP source code opened up in Atom, and there's a couple different places where the tests live. Uh, there is a folder called tests that lives in the root directory right here, and there are a number of tests in there. If you're testing things about the Zend engine, there is a Zend folder here, which is all about the Zend engine. Inside there, there's a test folder that has a bazillion tests in there, testing all different types of functionality of the Zend engine. The SAPIs all have their own tests. So here, if we look at the SAPI folder, we have the CLI, SAPI, CGI, SAPI, all the different SAPIs. If you open one of those SAPIs, you can see it has its own test folder. So this is the CLI SAPI that we compiled down and are using to, to run PHP with here. There's also the CGI one, which has its own test folder, and so on. Most of the test files you're going to find are on the extensions directory. So in here, we have all the extensions for PHP. Um, and we can just choose any of these, but each of those have their own test folder underneath them. So if I open up another folder, it's got its own tests, and you can see all the tests for the FTP extension, for example. And that's where you can find the extension tests. So if I go back to the main test folders here, and I look in the basic folder, I'll just open up 001.phpt. And as you can see, this is just a plain old PHP file. It's just got a weird extension. There's a bit of PHP code in there, and there's just plain text in there as well. Now this file is broken down into sections. And as you can see, using the dash dash all caps dash dash, <laughs> that's how you define a section. There's the test section, a file section, and an expect section. In the test section, we just have the name of the test that we want to execute. In the file section is the PHP code we want to run. And the expect, we just have what we are expecting to see if we were to run whatever was executed in the file section. All right. So as you can see, it's just saying hello world is what it's wanting to echo. So we would expect that this would echo out hello world. Why don't we just run this as a PHP file in the command line? So I don't have PHP installed by default, so we're just going to run PHP from our compiled binary. So SAPI slash CLI slash PHP, and let's give it that test which lived in tests slash basic slash 001.phpt. If we run that, it just ran just like a normal PHP file. There's nothing special about it. Um, you can see that expect the expect section is on the same line as the hello world. If we go back to that test, we can see there's no new line here. So as you might expect, <laughs> expect is going to be on the same line as hello world as it shows here. So this isn't very helpful just to run as a PHP file. We actually need to run it as a test. Now, how do you do that? Well, there is a, a special file in here, of, as I've mentioned before, a, a PHP script called runtest.php. This is what we use to run the tests for PHP. Now we could run that directly by using the, our compiled binary. So SAPI slash CLI slash PHP run tests.php. If I press enter, it's going to give me an error about there not being an environment variable called test PHP executable. The reason that it's complaining is that it's asking you to define an executable that you actually run, want to test. Now we can use two different versions of PHP in this scenario. We can use one version of PHP to run run tests and another version of PHP that will actually execute all of the tests against. So there are a couple ways that we can alleviate this issue. One, uh, we can just copy and paste this, this environment variable and use export, export, and then the name of the variable equals, and then the full path to our executable, src slash php dash source slash cli, uh, sorry, sappy, if I can spell it right, cli slash php. That's a lot. But if I were to export that variable and then try running it again, so, oh, and let me just show you that I've got echo. Well, test PHP executable, you can see that it's set to the full path. And you don't you don't want to use relative paths here. It's kind of best practice to use a, a, um, an absolute path if you can, just to make sure that doesn't screw with anything within the test suite. But now if I were to try to run the 
uh, I'm going to use the up key to use the previous commands here. I'm just going to run run tests again and see now it's not complaining about anything. It's just going to go ahead and run. Now by default though, it's going to be running the entire test suite and there's a ton of tests in there. As you can see at the bottom here, it's running 11,000 tests, which is not cool. So we're going to go ahead and stop that by pressing control C to stop the execution of that. I'm going to get back to running specific tests, but before I do, I'm going to unset that variable so that run tests will be complaining about us not being able to specify an executable. I don't really like using an environment variable so much as um, there's there's actually a handy flag you can use. So run test comes with um, a help, much like m uh, many command line scripts. Uh, it's There's a lot of output here. So I'm going to grep for something. I don't know if you've used grep before, but I'm going to try running the help again, but I'm going to pipe all that output to grep, which is basically like going to find some keywords here. And I want to look for executable, which I misspelled. Executable. There we go. Now we have two flags that we can use to specify the executable instead of using an environment variable. So one, one thing that we could do is use dash lowercase p and specify the path to our PHP binary, usr slash src, like this is going to take forever. But there's this handy one, capital P, which basically says whatever PHP executable is running run test, just use that one to test against. So if I use dash capital P and press enter, it will happily use the CLI that I'm running run test with to test against. Now, if I wanted to specify a specific test that I wanted to run, for example, what about this test? Why don't we run this through run test and see what happens? Uh, that we ran as a plain old PHP file, but let's see what happens when we run it as a binary. So we're going to do uh, run tests dash capital P to tell it to use the, CL, the, the binary that we're running, which is the CLI binary that we compiled. And we're going to specify in this argument, this next argument, the specific test that we want to test, which happens to be under tests, basic, 001.php2. When we run that, it runs run tests. Run test runs that test. <laughs> and as you can see here, it's passing. It says pass, trivial hello world test, and it gives the path of the test. And then it gives a summary here at the bottom. And as we can see, the, the number of tests that pass is one, which is all the tests, 100%. Very good. But one thing that I wanted to show is that this is how you run tests if you want to run specific tests without running the entire test suite. Now I could specify to run all the tests in basic if I use my up key here to run the previous command. I'm just going to remove the 001.php and if I press enter, it should run all the tests under the basic folder. And there's only 80 of those, so that should go pretty fast. And there you have it. We have 77 of the, the tests in the basic folder passed. There were a couple of tests that skipped though. Now, there are a number of reasons why a test might skip. You might be on a platform that the test doesn't even care about. You might have not compiled the extension or might not have the exact configuration set up to run the test. So there are some valid reasons for the test to skip. And we'll get into all the different statuses that a test can be uh, a little bit later on. But I wanted to show you a better way of running tests. There is a target in make that will run the test for you. So we used make in order to compile all of the C code into executable files. But there are a number of targets that exist on make within PHP source code that will do uh, different things. And one of those is make tests. If I type make tests, I don't have to specify a binary or anything like that. Make will know which binary I want to test. It's the one that make created, that make made, huh? And it's going to actually set up a number of different types of configuration as well to make this as painless as a process of as possible. So I used less keystrokes. I'm going to cancel out of that for a second to show you that what if you didn't want to run the entire test suite? That's kind of the default behavior. Well, I can just type make tests and then I'm going to use all caps tests equals and then whatever tests I want to run. So like we could just use the example we've been using tests basic 001.phpt and it will run the one test that we know passes, which is great. But what if we wanted to run more than just this one test? Well, I'm going to use the up arrow key to bring in the last command. I'm going to add some quotation marks around this test variable so that I can add a space and then add more tests that I want run tests to run. So I'm going to actually add the ext slash random. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, ext slash standard. So I'm going to use the standard lib. 
uh, tests. There's a, there's a test folder in there. And there's I'm going to run all the tests for the CSpring. So that's under random. And when I press enter, it should run not only the basic tests that we did, that we have already run before. As we scroll up, we can see, yes, it runs the trivial hello world test. But it also ran all the CSpring tests. So this would be kind of handy if you don't want to run the entire test suite and you just want to focus on a particular uh, extension or just want to you know, run the tests uh, against a feature or a bug that you're that you're trying to test. Now, the difference between make test and running tests with run test directly doesn't make a whole lot of difference at the moment. But I think later on you'll see the advantage to running it through make. So why don't we look at the different types of statuses that each test can be? So as we can see, uh, our favorite one, which is that they pass, which is here. Of course, tests can fail, so that's one of the statuses that it can be. Another status is borked, which basically is an invalid test file. You probably won't run into that one out of the box. If you do, there's been somebody committed something that they shouldn't have. But if you started to write a test file and maybe wrote the wrong type of section name, it would it might show up under the, the borked section or the bork status. There's also a warned status, which is created inside of the skip if section of a test. And we'll get more into details about the skip if section a little bit later. There is a leak status, which indicates a memory leak. And this is only going to be showing up if you have enabled Valgrind. And Valgrind is in the background checking for memory leaks. There's also a test status called X failed, which is expected fail. So the test failed, but it was expected to fail. So I guess it's technically a pass. It's kind of a, kind of a weird one. The final test status is slow, which means that the test took longer than the timeout that was set. By default, the timeout will be 60 seconds unless you're using Valgrind, which sets the timeout to 300 seconds. You can specify a different timeout if you wanted to by using the set-timeout flag. So now that we know kind of the how to run tests and the different type of statuses that they can be. Let's take a look at the run test code because that might be a little interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and search for it here in the root. Here it is, run tests. And I'm going to have to zoom out a little bit here so you can get a little bit better context here. There we go. So I'm going to scroll down just to kind of see um, from start to finish this whole big file of PHP. <laughs> and that's kind of what it feels like when you're scrolling through here. Very procedural, nothing wrong with procedural, but the way that this one was done, it's a little um, mm, PHP 4-ish. There's there's references to PHP 6, which never got released. Uh, there's it's just, it's just a big mess. As you can see, we're using, we've got a function here and we're using the global keyword to pull in state inside of this function. Yikes. There's just very strange ways of sharing state and it's just it it needs to be refactored no doubt um, and one of the biggest complaints that most internals people have is that run test does not support parallelization everything has to be done in serial when you run run tests so when you have a couple of tests and you run them in serial that's not a big deal but when you have 15,000 tests in your test suite and you try to run them all in serial it's going to take a really long time so if you're interested in maybe kind of helping with refactoring run tests, that might be a little project that you can get together with some people and nerd out about and figure out how you want to do that exactly. So that's how you run the test suite with run tests. In the next video, we're going to be taking a closer look at the PHP T files and hopefully create our own and see what happens.